Hi everyone, this is I am Sagar Shah and today I am here with a very interesting video for all of you. Now in roughly around three to three and a half years of writing articles for Chess Base India, what I have realized is that there is immense talent in the country, not just with, re with regards to playing chess, but also in annotating, analyzing, you know, making videos, commentary, so many different things. And today I'm going to acquaint you with one of such talents in India. His name is Arjun Kalyan. He's 16 years old and he's from Tamil Nadu, uh, Chennai. And he sent us some very nice analysis of his games. Uh, and it is simply fantastic. If you go over them, uh, I'll be putting a link of the article in the description below. Uh, so you can have a look at it. But first, before that, what we did is instead of trying to give you the analysis just uh, right away and you can go through it you play through it what i thought is i will extract some very interesting moments and put it as a quiz in front of you so i always believed that if you are able to put your brain to work you keep your mind working that is the best way to improve at chess and so in this example uh, in this video i'm going to give you six positions uh, and I'm going to give you time for his, each position, how much time you should be taking to solve them. But here's the condition. You shouldn't go through the entire video and then think about uh, the answers. When I give the first position, you should pause the video, think about it in the given time frame, write down your answer and then come back. Now, the, the reason for this is because if you move to the second position, it would be the continuation of the game and you will get an idea of what the answer could be. So that's the reason why I would want you to think on your own, take a book, write down your answer because many times if you don't write it down, you just think in your head and then you listen to me, then you say, oh, but I had thought about it. You know, when the reality is in the game, you may not play it because there are a lot of thoughts that go in your head. But once you write down, that's what you are thinking about. So this is, uh, the Arjun Kalyan challenge and uh, this is the first position in front of you it's white to play uh, you're going to take five minutes on your clock uh, and pause the video now and try to find what is it that white would play here okay let's move to the second position now uh, this is white's white to move once again the last move was rook to c7 here and what would you play here as white? Once again, you must take five minutes on the clock, pause the video, write down your answer, and then we'll move to the third position. Okay, this one is going to be a little tricky now for you. This is again uh, white to play, and what would you do here? It's uh, Arjun's move, and here he came up with a very nice solution to the problem, white to play five minutes on the clock moving on we go to another game this time Arjun has the white pieces against Nikita Mayarov uh, the previous game was against Kantor Gergli and in this position black has just went uh, gone for bishop d6 attacking the rook what would you play here so pause the video and this one you get only three minutes to think it's white to play Coming to the penultimate question now, black has played his queen to g6. If you are white here and you have five minutes on the clock, what would you play here? And here's your final question. This one is a little tricky, but I think this is very clear here. White to play. How should white win in this position? You have exactly five minutes on the clock. Uh, not particularly difficult if you are alert, but uh, Arjun was not able to find it during the game. To all those who tried to solve all the six positions took 28 minutes. There were five minutes for five positions and three minutes for one. So 28 positions in all. Congratulations, you have tried. And I think this is extremely important to become a strong chess player. Uh, you need to work with games. You need to work with positions and you need to work hard with them. It doesn't matter if you're going to look at games by Anand, Kramnik, Karpov, 
and all these great players or you're going to look at games of IMs, GMs who are 2400, 2500. What matters is whether you can put your brain to work at any given point. So you're given a position in front of you and can you start thinking. So this is what I wanted to do with this, these positions and now I'm going to go through the answers one by one. The first position here, uh, this is what you had to think, what should white do? And if you came up with the answer rookie d1, not bad, this is a good idea because you want to push c5 in the position and you will get full points for this. However, I think Arjun went for something much more interesting. He played the move g3 and I like it very much. He wants to play his king to g2, rook h1 uh, and then double with say rook h3, rook h1. This is what he does in the game. So queen b6 was played, king g2, ab3, ab3, queen d8 and you can see the rook moves to the h file. Uh, the other rook then joins in rook h3 king g7, rook h1 and now rook c7 was played and this was the second question for you, what should white play here? Uh, I hope that you didn't break your head trying to find some sacrifice here with rook into h6 and all sorts of things. Sometimes when you have an advantage in one sector of the board which clearly is the case on the king side here, all you need to do is open a second front and that's why the right answer is c5. Fantastic move uh, by Arjun because after uh, d into c5, d6 came. Now rook into c5 would have been much better because after knight into c5, d into c5, this position is playable for black I think because he has a pawn and these two rooks now suddenly start looking stupid without the knight on e4. So however after rook c5, white can continue knight into g5. And after queen into g5, take the pawn here and then take on f7 and this is winning. But you can see that this, if you have seen this uh, defense first of all, rook into c5 and then considered this counter attacking move, knight into g5 and rook h6, great work. You know, you are right up there, uh, grandmaster level. Okay, d into c5 was played, Arjun pushed and here we reach the third position. I hope that you put your brain to work. Somehow you see this queen is looking here, the rook is here, you want to take on g5, queen into g5 is coming in, things are not working out and hence the right move is d7, it's like throwing a spanner in the works, you are able to cut this rook out here and suddenly there are tactics on this rook, if the a7 rook moves, knight into g5 is in the air, so after Rook a1 was played in the game, but just let's have a look at a few variations. If queen into d7, knight g5 and the rooks penetrate here, so that's winning. If rook into d7, then knight g5, queen g5 and you win the rook on a8. Uh, a possible is king f8, but again this doesn't look so great, you know. Uh, this is already very difficult to hold. Uh, white is winning. Perhaps there was a possibility to play after uh, d7, the move c4, trying to create counterplay. But now you see the idea of d7, you take, queen takes, rook into h6, takes, takes and take the pawn on f7. Uh, and cb3, you go f4 and it's a mating net against the black king. Uh, this is a very strong move, I would say d7. I like it very much and after that the game ended in a couple of moves, uh, not many moves were played, d8 is threatened but you can't really go back queen d8 because then e5 pawn is hanging and the game ends because the rook is hanging on e1. <clears throat> so this is how the first three positions panned out, I hope that you were able to solve all three of them, you are going to go to the next three ones in the next game of Arjun. So here was the first question, your rook on e5 is attacked, where do you retreat it to? Uh, the natural move is rook e1, which is possible, but if you were able to find the move rook to e2, this is great work. Because if you go rook e3, then you are somehow blocking this bishop on c1. However, if you go back rook e2, it means you are doing two things, you are keeping the bishop open to join the battle. And at some point, 
Arjun has sort of preempted that his opponent would take on g3 and after fg3 the rook on a1 will come to the f file. So in that way both the rooks would be firing down the open file. So rook e2 very nice move queen c7 and here bishop g5 by the way this is all preparation by Arjun. So it's Breyer variation uh, fg3 queen g3 he took on f6 rook f1 and now the next position over here it's white to play what would you play here right i hope that you didn't try to avoid the queen exchange sure black king is a little weak uh, and it could make sense to you know uh, move your key queen away from c2 somewhere let's say d2 c1 but the right move is rook e3 the point being that after the queen exchange here these two three pieces are already capable of launching a very strong attack. Now here rook d8 should have been played. This was uh, definitely a good move. Yeah, so, so by the way just to uh, confirm rook e3 is the best move in the position. You are getting your rook on the third rank. Queen c2, bishop c2 and now rook d8 was better when after rook f6 white is doing very well. However, it is not completely winning. Bishop e6 was played. And this was your uh, final question in the game. What would you play? And this one was not so tough. So I hope you found rook g3 check, king h8, and now the very strong killing move, bishop into h7. Uh, if you take the bishop, then the rook jumps in to f4, and it's a checkmate on h4. So this was the reason why bishop e6 was a bad move. However, in the game, Arjun missed it and took rook into f6, after which we had a long end game, which the youngster from India did win. However, rook g3 uh, here was the correct move and then take one h7. So, six positions. I hope you liked them. They were from a practical game. You think about these positions. Some of the answers were not very deep as such. They were about making plans like g3, king g2. Some of them were uh, very tactical in nature like d7, bishop into h7 over here. So just like a normal game, you have some easy decisions, some tough ones, somewhere you have to calculate, somewhere you have to be on the field. Uh, if you want to go for in-depth analysis of these two games, please go to chessbase.in. This is the website of Chessbase India. We will have the link of the article in the description below so you can go through these games. A lot of people have been asking for PGN files. I think it is better if you go to chessbase.in and from there you can download it. We have that feature on our replayer. So have a nice day and a nice weekend and I hope this was good warm up for you if you are going to play any tournaments on the Sunday tomorrow.